Well, hello everyone. It's uh, great to be with you today. Uh, thanks for joining me today for my live stream where we are going to be doing some planning for the month of July. All right, I am just double checking to make sure that everything is set right and everything looks okay. Uh, please let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can see me okay. Hi, Kim. It's good to see you. Hi, Samantha. All right. And I don't know if you guys can hear this, but of course, my trusty Emma is next to me sleeping on her blanket, snoring up a storm as usual. <laughs> All right. Hi, Bernice. How are you? All right. And I don't look like a mermaid today, which is good. I think that's great. Okay. We are uh, ready to get started. I wanted to come to you guys today live because last month... <laughs> I was so busy with traveling and catching up from all of that and doing all the things um, that I got a little behind in setting up my June um, setup. So I wanted to come on live and do uh, my July setup. This is normally my weekly review time where I would go through and review everything, um, you know, and get things started for the next week. But, uh, in this case, not only am I doing it for the next week, but I want to go ahead and get the next month set up. I think July is going to be a pretty busy month around here, and uh, I just want to make sure everything is set up. So I'm excited to share that with you today. Let's see how everybody is doing today. Um, let's see. Oh, Bernice, having some health issues but otherwise, okay. Well, we'll be thinking about you and sending you positive thoughts so that you can heal all the way over there in Switzerland. I know I have a couple of friends here uh, near me that are under the weather um, and recovering from surgery. And so I'm trying to send as many positive vibes out into the world as possible to help people recover. So I am hoping that you will be feeling better soon. All right. Well, um, <laughs> I'm kind of on a fruit theme. So this year or this month's theme for the month of July uh, is watermelons. And I found these really cute watermelon stickers. Um, we happen to love watermelon in our house. In fact, uh, a large watermelon can be gone pretty quickly uh, once we cut into it. So uh, watermelon is something that I picked for my theme for this year, for this month of July. And uh, I just want to jump in and get started. Uh, so I'm going to show you um, the watermelon theme. Here we go. All right. So as you can see here, uh, again, this is from Doodlebug Draws. And um, I just thought it was really, really cute. It's a small sticker set. Um, but that's okay. I don't need a lot of stickers. I just need a few, uh, to tell, you know, to help get me motivated for my theme. All right. Uh, one of the first things that I always do when I start a new month is besides choosing my theme and setting my colors, which you can see in this little, uh, text box that I have up here, this little table that I have. Um, I like to create a, what I call like a header or a title block for the month. So when I was looking at these particular pictures today, I decided uh, that I would try, um, try something a little different. So this is what, you guys can let me know what you think. Uh, I want to try this green circle and I'm going to give myself some working space over here. And I will uh, paste that on the side. And, you know, this uh, sticker would normally be used for like writing, you know, the date or, you know, a bill that you need to pay and then the date that it's due, that kind of thing. Um, but I wanted to try something different. So I'm going to make a copy of this piece of watermelon 
and I'm going to paste it over here. Control V to paste. And I want to see if I can get this to fit on top of that circle like that. So it kind of looks like there's been a chunk of the watermelon taken out. I think that's kind of cute. Now, because this is a title for my months, I want to uh, add something, uh, the name of the month. So again, I'm going to copy that, bring it over into my working space, paste it on the side. And as you can see here, it says July with these cute little flower blossoms there. And I'm going to put that in place. And remember, if you hold down your Alt key, you can move the size and get it kind of exactly where you want it. And I think that looks pretty cute right there. Are you guys catching my vibe so far? And then uh, Doodlebug Draws always does these very cute little mice. And so I'm going to take a copy of that mouse and I'm going to put him right up next to the watermelon as if he is the one who has taken that little slice that's there. Now I could make him bigger so it looks like the slice actually came out of the watermelon. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you like the big mouse or should I leave him smaller? Something like that. Scroll in so we can see a little bit. <laughs> you know, I think I have more fun playing with these stickers than I do anything else. All right, so let me know what you guys think. Big mouse, little mouse. I like the look overall, so it doesn't matter to me. Little mouse. I think I agree. I like the little mouse too. All right, then once I have everything in place the way that I want it, uh, I simply can draw a square um, around the entire box like so, which will select everything. So I have everything there selected then, and I can copy that, and then I will go down here underneath, and I will paste as a picture. Now remember what that does is it takes the one, two, three, four graphics that I have here. So the four individual graphics and it makes them one big graphic that I can use over and over again. Okay. All right. <laughs> you know, it's interesting when I was looking at these colors the first time uh, on this color set, I'm like, is that really the color of watermelon? Uh, and the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know, it really is. I always think of it being as more a red color, but this actually, uh, I think, is a true watermelon color. Anyway, I think that's good. <laughs> okay, so now we have our cute graphic done for the month of July. And as you can see um, over here on my pages, I have nothing else created for the month of July. I don't even have a page where I've been dumping um, little things, little reminders for myself. So I truly am going to start from scratch today. And I wanted to do at least one or two pages from scratch so that you guys could see actually how I build those pages. So let's go ahead and add a new page. And uh, I'm going to start with this completely blank page. The first page that I always put in my monthly sections is my uh, inbox. Uh, do you guys use an inbox in your planners? Uh, do you keep it on a separate page or do you have a section uh, that you keep it in? Uh, let me know. I, I find my inbox to be an invaluable uh, tool. Um, let's see. I'm going to start from the very beginning. Normally, I would go into a month prior, so let's say I would go into June, and I would find the inbox for June, which is right here, and I would copy this page and then delete everything that's not necessary, but today I wanted to show you guys how to create the entire page from scratch, so I'm going to go over here to my year-long section, and I do have... Um, a notebook design page that is here 
and you can see that this notebook design page is just a graphic of the notebook that I'm using, okay? Um, I also have on this page a few icons over here that I created in PowerPoint as well. I do have a video about how I created this notebook and PowerPoint. Uh, if you would like to check that out, it is listed on my channel. But for now, I'm going to take this graphic and I'm going to make a copy of it. And I am going to take it back to July. And I will paste it uh, on the page. So Control V to paste. And I like to move my notebook up so that my title page or the title of my page is now included on my notebook. All right. Uh, let's see. First thing I want to do is I want to um, fix this calendar and I will change that to today as the day that this was created and the time is correct. Okay. All right. So once I have this big notebook page in there, what I need to do is I need to uh, set that picture as the background so it does not wiggle around. That graphic will not move. Okay. So I'm going to go down here to set picture as background and I'm going to click on that. And now you see if I click anywhere on the notebook and try to grab it, it will not move. Is it there permanently? No. I can always right click again, go down to set picture as background and uncheck that. And then that graphic I can move around wherever I would like. Okay. So just because you set something as the background doesn't mean it's going to stay there forever. All right. So there is that. Now let's grab our watermelon cutie over here that we made. Zoom out a little bit. I will make a copy of this and take it back to our untitled page. And I will paste on the side. Bernice says that she loves OneNote a ton, but she really uses it more for research notebooks, projects, recipe books, reading journals, etc. And I agree with you. I use it for all of those things and more. <laughs> um, and I really started using it as a digital planner uh, way, way back in 2019. Um, I had been a paper planner up to that point. And um, I really just wanted to make sure that I had my information with me at all times. And my daughter and I used to love to go shopping every year for, you know, whatever planner we were going to use for the year. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought, do I really, A, need to store all of this paper somewhere? And B, uh, you know, I can be more environmentally friendly. So I decided to give OneNote a try. and. Um, you know, and the, the more that I started using it, the more that I love it. And it's funny to me to actually go back and look at my original 2019 planner, uh, that I was using in OneNote and to see how it has developed and changed over the years. I think that's pretty cool. Welcome Kevin. And you're right. That is the nice thing about OneNote. You can use it for anything and everything. Um, it's, it's amazing to me the search capabilities that OneNote has. And I love the linking capabilities as well. So, um, okay. So I have my cute little graphic here and I need to create a text box where I am just going to say inbox and notes. And once I get that set, I'm going to choose... Um, I have lots of different favorite fonts. But one of my favorites um, is Harrington. <laughs> I just think it's pretty. I, I, I really like it. So I tend to use the Harrington a lot uh, in my uh, notebooks and stuff just because I think, you know, they work really great. Let's see how this dark green will look. Let's see. Uh, I might make this bold to make it a little bit darker and it looks like it will look better if I make it a little bit larger as well. All right. Um,
Bernice is saying she has problems because she has some low vision issues. Uh, using it on her phone is not really easy. I can imagine that would be true. Um, and uh, not having a tablet would be a problem. Although, Bernice, think about if you did a daily page, maybe that would be something, you know, that you could keep on your phone and uh, be able to use. I'm not sure. Uh, that might just be a suggestion. Okay. All right. So, you know, on my inbox, I always use a list of my custom tags that I have. So what I need to do is I'm going to go, go over to, again, my year long section over here. And I have a list of custom tags that I use that I think is my garden list. I'll need that in a few minutes. Inbox master list. Here we go. Okay. Here you see a list of all of the tags that I typically use. So I'm going to grab that and make a copy and I will take it back to my inbox page and I will paste it on the side over here and just drag that into place. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see if I'm going to use this box up here. I might as well incorporate it into what we are doing. Like so. There we go. Okay. Now, uh, again, the way I use my uh, notes on here, my inbox notes, uh, is... You know, let's say I have something that I need to record. So maybe there's a budget task that I need to do. So I'll just come in here under budget task, hit enter, and you see that it gives me another budget task that I can work on right there. And then I can put in um, uh, record deposits. And, and uh, then once I get it done, I can go ahead and check it off. Okay, so I have quite an extensive list of tasks. Um, I use the GTD method. So a lot of my tasks relate to the GTD method. So I have action items, things that I need to do next, things I want to do at the computer, um, you know, garden tasks, uh, CCL, crystal clear life tasks, church task, budget task to buy errands, etc., etc., all the way down to items to talk to my husband about items to talk to my daughter about things I'm waiting on someday, maybe, which is uh, certainly a GTD thing. And then I also have a list of things that are deferred because often you might have a great idea, but you don't have the time, energy, or resources to put into that project at the moment. And so rather than completely get rid of it out of your planner, simply putting a, defer a deferred checkbox next to it um, is something that keeps it um, available for you, but um, doesn't have it on your next action list right away, okay? And for those of you who may not know, uh, you can have multiple tags on one item. So let's say record deposits is something that I have listed as a budget task. I can also go up here to my tags and say, I need to do that when I am at the computer. And so now I have a budget task and I have an at the computer um, tag next to that. So I know when I sit down at the computer and I work on my budget stuff, this is something that I need to do. Okay. So I love my multiple tags. I just, I just use tags everywhere. And I created all of these tags as customized tags with checkboxes because for me, I really like to check things off. All right, Kevin is saying that he uses OneNote for genealogy presently. Uh, no one else in his family seems to be interested. So he wants to be able to track everything easily, especially in his research. You know, Kevin, I did a little bit of genealogy research um, for our family, and I've been storing that in OneNote. I would love to see uh, how you're organizing uh, those pages and things. I 
started with like a family tree and then I made a linked page to each person. So like my maternal grandmother, my husband's uh, maternal and paternal grandmother. And then I set up a separate page for them as well. Um, and I've been storing some photographs in there um, as well. So that's that's pretty interesting. I'd love to see that. So the word deferred means to put off until later, okay? So uh, postpone might be another word that uh, you would use in place of deferred. It means it's something that you still want to be able to do. You just don't have the energy to do it right now, okay? Yes, so Kevin says deferred means to postpone for later action. I would agree with that, okay? All right, so. Uh, I try not to put too many things under deferred, but from time to time, things show up there. Anyway, so my inbox and notes page is pretty much done. Another thing that I like to do on this other blank side is I like to add some kind of notes box. So let's see what they have here. Um, I think. I'm going to take this green one and I'll take that one back and I'll paste it. <laughs> Organize, what's that? Organize is that that thing that tortures you <laughs> to get things done that you may not want to do. All right, what can we put in that box to make it cute? How about this cut watermelon? We'll put that down there at the bottom as well. Make it a little bit smaller. We'll rotate it. So let's flip it around and put it in this corner like so. Okay, and then I just like to do the word notes and musings. That might be anything that comes to my head. And again, I like Harrington. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I like this, pick up the um, features of that up here with this paintbrush tool. And then I'm going to bring that over here to notes and musings and let that be exactly the same format. So there we go, okay? Now I have a little section for that. So there's my inbox page, pretty simple. Uh, I like to keep it simple because as you've seen in some months, they get very full with all of the things that I need to do. Um, so Bernice, the difference for me between something that would go on my someday maybe list and something that would go on my deferred list is, I'm gonna make a confession here, that basement clean out that some of you may have seen on my list for a while. Um, I have lots of things that ended up in my basement as various family members have died and passed, and pass, or passed away, and I have inherited some of their things. So I have some of my husband's grandmother's sewing supplies down there. I have craft supplies from a friend of mine. I have some of my mother's things that are downstairs. Um, I have some of my father's um, medical supplies, wheelchairs and things like that, that are down in my basement. Okay. Those are things that need to be gone through and either gotten rid of or reorganized or something like that. Okay. That is something that I have to do. Okay, so I put that as a task and from time to time it goes on to my deferred list, meaning I'll get to it later. I'm going to do it later, but it's something that I need to do. My someday maybe list is things that are kind of daydreams for me, uh, like I'd like to learn to speak Portuguese or I would like to travel to Amsterdam or um, you know, I would like to start my own business or, you know, something like that. So those are kind of, for me anyway, bigger, loftier dream type things, as opposed to things that I definitely need to do. And I just need to find a, a time to schedule them in my, uh, 
um, appointments. I don't know how other people might use their someday maybe list, but that's kind of how I use it. Um, so deferred means definitely they need to get done at some point. Someday maybe is more kind of daydreamy for me. So I hope that helps. I hope that helps. Okay. Uh, now that you've seen me kind of create this page from scratch, um, I really find that having this notebook graphic uh, on the page really helps me organize and contain the things that I um, am looking to uh, keep on a page. I know that OneNote has unlimited page size, and sometimes that's a blessing, and sometimes that's a curse. So, uh, in order to help me wrangle in all of my ideas, I kind of like to have, um, you know, this, this outline uh, to go by. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to add a new page here. So let's start again with a blank page. And this time, since you've seen me build this page, what I'm going to do, let's see if I can do this. I can also go up here and... I don't know if it'll work if I've got it set for the background. Let me see. Nope, it's not going to grab that background. So let me uncheck that. Uh, and now if I can grab everything. And take it to my untitled page and paste. All right. So there I have my graphic. Let's grab him out of the box. All right, we don't need this green box. We can get rid of that. And we can get rid of all of this. And let's see. Pull him out of that container and place it up at the top, like so. Okay, now did those other graphics go behind him? I think they did, so I'm gonna order him to the back so that I can see everything else. And this little guy, let's take this whole thing out of the way. Not the notebook, Crystal. Put it over here on the side so it's out of the way. I am working on a smaller screen today than I usually do. Um, there we go. Okay, so set picture as background gets that in place. Then we can bring this cute graphic back in here. And this is going to be our July dashboard. And that's going to be our title for that. All right. And I wanted to show you again how I do my July dashboards. I have um, let's see, uh, Kevin, I think I agree with you. I think deferred means procrastination. <laughs> Perhaps that's what I should change my customized tag to instead of deferred. Perhaps I should say procrastination. This is a procrastination project. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, I really wish that I didn't procrastinate, but I, I often do with that project. Okay, so uh, yearly calendar. I have a yearly calendar. This is kind of my long future log. And what I do, this, this calendar was downloaded from Calendarpedia. They make a format that is for Excel or for Word. And basically you can use either one. I download that. It's a free download. And then I put it into OneNote. And then I can go in here and add things, you know, future planning uh, as I see fit. Okay. Then when it comes to creating my monthly page, what I simply do is go in here and grab the section of my future log, like so, and make a copy of it. 
and take it back to that July section. And I will paste it right over here on the side. All right. And I kind of like this future log look or this monthly log look better than a, you know, the traditional block grid kind of um, monthly page. I just kind of like to see it in this agenda format. I like that the dates of the weekend dates and the holidays are highlighted in a certain color. That's very helpful for me. Um, but I don't really worry about, you know, I, I, I think I can use this just as well um, as I can one of the block grids. And I think it takes up a lot less space. And if I need to add more information on this page, I can. Okay. What do I mean by that? Well, uh, like for example, I'm going to go ahead and put in the birthdays that I have for this month. So on the 6th, I have Kim's birthday. And on the 16th, I have Justin's birthday. And I already have my daughter's birthday listed and I have George's birthday listed. Um, so you can see I have, I have lots and lots of things already listed on this particular day or on this particular month. But if I want to uh, go in and add something. So for example, here on July 4th, Independence Day, I can simply hit enter and it gives me more space and I can type in that we are having a neighborhood party that day and it will add that. So I can do as many, um, you know, lines per day that I need. So I think that's really, really great. All right. Um, You know, Bernice, I, I have broken it down into, I've broken that project down of the basement into like six main areas or zones. Part of the problem is it's cold in the basement and I don't like to work down there in the winter. The second problem is I have allergies to dust and it's dusty down there. So I have to wear a mask or I end up, the last time I started working on the project, I ended up getting sick and was sick for like two weeks with a sinus infection. So... It's really, it's really, I don't know. I don't know. My daughter just says, mom, get a dumpster, put it in the yard, haul everything out and be done with it, which may end up what happens. I don't know. Some of the stuff down there is good though, and really should go, you know, be donated to the thrift store or something like that. People, uh, people can use that kind of stuff. So I will eventually get there. All right, now, one of the things that I look at on this page, I think that yellow is too bright. I want to do my color shading uh, for my tables in something that is a little bit more pleasing. So let's see. I went through and I found a couple of colors uh, that I think uh, will work. Uh, actually, let me show you how to find colors on here. Under more colors... And you can kind of go down the scale until you get to something that's a lot closer to what you need. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? That's um, a little bit off, isn't it? At least on my screen. Let's try again. More colors. Uh... That looks too pink. Sometimes it's nice if you just have the hex codes. I don't happen to have the hex codes for this particular set. Let's try that one. You know what? That'll be okay for now. So then I can just go through and do all of the table shading the same colors.
And now that I'm thinking about it, I think I already chose some colors on my watermelon page when I was setting that up. Let's see. This will work for now, okay? All right, the next thing that I always put right here are my goals or my intentions, what I want to work on for the month. Um, I've done a couple different um, ways that I like to track my goals, um, a couple different boxes and, and uh, icons and things like that. Um, for goals, my top priorities, that kind of thing. I did goals this way one time um, where I did the three goals that I was working on. Um, I did them this way one time in kind of a picture frame layout. Uh, I really think I like the ones that I used in June though. So let's go back to that June dashboard and I'm going to grab this whole section right here. So I'm going to go up to the draw tool, grab my lasso tool. choose everything, make a copy of it, and bring it back to July. I can come in here and paste. The color on my project tab looks better. Yeah, that is kind of a closer match, isn't it? Um, let's see if I can, I'll adjust that here in just a second. Okay. All right. So goals. Now let's get rid of the things that we don't need. We'll get rid of the strawberry and we can switch out this box for the boxes that were over here. So I'm going to take this one, hold down the shift key and that one, and we will copy those and take them back to our dashboard, paste on the side. So there's the green one. And let's move that into place. And we'll put our text box back on top of it. Bring it to the front and it goes on top. I will need to adjust these goals because they are the goals from the previous month. And most of this work has been done. Let's see, we'll copy that one. Get rid of these two red boxes. This, I think, is the fun part. I like playing around with uh, things and making them uh, look interesting. Um, let's see. Sarah's quilt is done. Actually, I can get rid of this whole box because her quilt is done. I'm looking forward to presenting it to her this weekend. So I'm excited about that. I hope that she likes it. You know, you never know when you make something for someone, if they are going to like it or not, but hopefully she will like it or at least appreciate the time that has gone into making it for her. Okay. All right. So I have my goals section there. Um, and let's see, you know, on this page, I did choose a couple of colors. That are up there. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'll fix it in a little while. All right. Uh, another thing that I like on my dashboard is I like to put my garden information over here. Again, back into my year long section. I have a master gardener list that I keep uh, all of the stuff on that needs to be done every month. So um, for the month of July, 
there is really not a lot to do in the garden because, um, you know, it's, it's pretty hot here and, um, you know, things are just growing and really all you need to do is kind of keep on top of the weeds and, uh, you know, harvest your, your vegetables if you're growing them and that kind of thing. All right. So, um, things like blueberries, um, putting in late crops of squash and beans, cucumbers, that kind of thing. If you like to, you know, grow those kinds of things. Does anybody else out there have a garden or like to grow things? I know that, let's see, take this leaf back, make it gardeny. And this flower, whoops, broke my own rule, didn't paste on the side or in an empty space, and things moved around. That is one feature that I wish uh, OneNote had. I wish they would uh, have a way to lock um, a graphic in place. I think that would be very helpful. Um, I don't know if that will ever happen. I uh, haven't heard of that being something that they're going to work on, but um, you know, it would be it would be nice if they did. All right. So again, paste on the side or at the bottom. And Let's rotate him a little bit. So he's kind of laying on his side. <laughs> I can make grass grow, but then I have to mow it. True. Uh, that's true. We don't have a lot of grass to mow here, but we do have enough that, you know, it should be done about once a week. So I don't know. I like, I'm trying in my little greenhouse that I uh, bought last year, I'm trying to grow um, tomatoes and cucumbers. And I went out to check this morning and some of my tomatoes are now touching the roof of the greenhouse. So they are eight foot tall. <laughs> they are getting up there. And my cucumbers are growing along the fence post that I put in the back of the greenhouse. I took two uh, stakes and put a piece of fencing across it. And the cucumbers are growing up and they are full of flowers. So I'm hoping that I will have cucumbers very soon. I also did pick a small little cherry tomato uh, this morning, which was interesting. Okay. So my in the garden list is here. I also usually keep a currently list and on, uh, my year long, um, section over here, I keep a, uh, an area that has frequently used templates for me. So things like my currently template, which really is just two columns. I have a daily schedule, I have a meal planner. Um, I have, you know, my morning and evening routines. All of those things that I make once, I store them here. And then if I need them, I can grab them quickly. Okay. So here is my currently I am section. So I'm going to copy that and I will take it back to July and I will paste it in here. Control V to paste. And we'll pull that up. I really, really love uh, looking back on these and seeing, you know, kind of what's been happening um, with myself, you know, in in uh, throughout the months. It's really kind of fun to see. And let's do this one in this lighter green color to pull in those watermelon vibes. All right. Okay. Um, 
I also usually like to do a recipe uh, to try for every month. So I'm gonna grab this little box here and take that back as a recipe to try. And make him a little bit bigger. I like to try new recipes, um, either dessert or, you know, main dish, side dish, salad, something like that, um, because I get tired of eating the same thing over and over and over again. Um, so I think it's kind of fun to find new recipes. And we'll put that giant piece of watermelon right there. There we go. Okay, so what else is missing from this page? Um, let's see. Let's look back at June and see what I had on my June page. Oh yes, my um, garden zones that I work on in my yard. I will take that forward. to July. We'll paste that down here. And There we go. All right, and if I wanna put boxes around those, let's do something different this time. Let's just draw a shape like so. And we can make it bigger, oops, undo. What would I do without an undo button? And let's look at our pen properties. And my pen properties are coming up off the page. You guys can't see them. Let's see if I can grab it. There we go. And we'll say, okay. And we'll bring this watermelon to the front. So he is on top. Okay. All right, so uh, so that I'm not spending too much time at one place, I do my garden in zones. So I work a little bit in each section of the yard every day, and then I don't ever have to feel like I, you know, it's kind of like cleaning the house. You don't have to spend all day every day doing that. All right. And then the other thing that I have that's uh, really very helpful to me is this little section down here. This is uh, a list of important links that I have. And so uh, it links to like my Google Calendar and um, my reading log and things like that. Okay, so I'm gonna put that there as well. And I can maybe put one of these boxes behind it. So it kind of stands out. And we'll send that to the back. And there we go. It sounds like a thunderstorm is brewing outside. So I apologize if you can hear the, uh, the thunder. We've had rain for the last couple of days and uh, I'm not complaining because we need the rain, but there we go. Okay, so there is my main uh, July dashboard, and that's looking good. And we will move on to my health and habits page. So let's add that page. And actually, I'm going to show you the, the copying the whole page way uh, from here. 
So I'll make sure that that picture is set as the background. Then I'm going to go up here and right click on that and I can copy or move that whole page. That brings up a small dialog box. Again, that's off on a different screen. Let me bring it over here so you can see it. And it says, where do you want to move that to? I want to keep it in my July section and I want to make a copy of it. So then it makes a duplicate copy, which I can then change the title to, um, health and habits. Okay. We can make that bigger. We can move our mouse. wherever we would like to move him. All right, and then again, just like some of my other things, I keep uh, the template of my health and habits on this page. There's different dailies that I've used. Here's health and habits one side. So we'll copy that and take it back. Paste and grab the other side. And copy that and paste. It's interesting to me to, uh, if I see a design that somebody else is doing or I think of an idea uh, that I really like, um, I will go ahead in my templates section and go ahead and do a mock-up or create it um, so that, uh, you know, if I think about using it, I will, you know, already have it created and I won't lose that. I used to sketch things in a paper book, you know, of ideas. And then I decided, no, I'm just going to start storing them here in OneNote so that I can find them if I need to. Okay. All right. Let's change this. I have somebody here who wants to say hello. Harry, do you want to say hello? All right, I'm going to see if I can pick him up. You guys want to see my cat? All right. Oh, no. Well, Kevin, I'm glad. I'm hoping you're getting some motivation today. Um, I'm sorry to hear that you've had health issues. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can grab Harry. Where'd you go, boy? Come here. Oh, he's walked off now. Maybe he doesn't want to come up. Come here, boy. I think he wants to go out, but he doesn't realize it's going to be a thunderstorm and he's not going to want to uh, see that. So he'll be back in a minute, I'm sure. He likes to come up and dig into my pants leg as I'm sitting here at the desk. Uh, yes, he's tap tapping me. So actually, I have one cat uh, right here beside me. She's snoring. I have one cat on the floor right behind me. And then Harry is uh, roaming around wanting to go outside. <laughs> He's a mess. Okay. So my health and habits page, this is where I record, you know, what medications I take, my blood sugar, my weight, my symptoms. If I'm having, you know, issues with something, how much I'm getting done for exercise. Um, and then always my health and habit goals are the same. I like to have, um, eight fruits and vegetables a day. I like to, uh, eight hours of sleep. I like eight, um, oh, brought him back. I brought the boy back. Okay. Here he is. Say hi, Harry. Say hi. He, this is Harry Potter and he is our big, big boy. He's very handsome and very grumpy, but you want to say hi? Want to say hi? 
He likes it better if I hold him over my shoulder. Let's see. Is that better? Do you like that better? Yes. Say hello to everyone. Hello. Hello. Oh, you're purring away, aren't you, boy? Okay, I have to get back to work. Bye-bye. Usually before I do any filming or anything, I have to play with all the cats and brush them and make sure they're all settled so that they will um, sleep during the filming. <laughs> but let's see. Okay, so eight hours of sleep, which the cats get plenty of. Eight fruits and vegetables. Um, eight thousand steps in a day on average. And... Um, eight glasses of water. I call that my great eight. If I can get that done in a day, I am doing really well. So. All right. Um, you guys are so nice to each other. I love that. I love that. Positive vibes to everyone. Hoping everyone is feeling better. So. All right, so that's quickly how I set up my health and habits page. Um, you know, it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Uh, I like doing it on a monthly basis so that I can track whether my blood sugar numbers are going up or going down, whether my weight's going up or going down. Um, uh, you know, if I'm getting enough steps in, if I'm getting enough sleep. And most of this information comes from my Garmin watch that I wear that keeps track of the hours of sleep that I have and all of that kind of thing. Okay. Um, I never really show one that's all filled out though, because you guys don't need to see all that. Oh, when Harry Potter was a little kitten, uh, uh, he has, uh, two siblings. So there's three of them total. We have Harry Potter. We have Hermione who has long bushy hair. Uh, she's gray. And then we have Lily, who is the solid black one. But the three of them were born and they lived in my daughter's uh, bathroom. And Harry Potter, when you would go in to sweep the litter, he always wanted to ride on the broom. That's part of why we ended up calling him Harry Potter, because it was just so funny to see this little kitten hanging on to the broomstick and, and uh, being swept around the room. So <laughs> I love my cats. All right, so uh, watermelon theme inbox, July do, uh, dashboard, uh, July health and habits. And then I also have um, this blank untitled page, which I will, uh, let's delete that one. We don't need that one. Let's make a copy of this inbox again, because it is the cleanest, simplest one to do. And we'll leave that in July in our current section and make a copy. And now this inbox will become our household tasks. All right. So we'll get rid of that again. And then back again in my year long section, I keep uh, household monthly tasks that are listed here. And there are two sections of them. Let's see if I can uh, control and grab both of them, copy and take them back to July. Kevin says that they have uh, three adult cats and two new kittens, one of which likes to sit in front of the TV when he's watching golf <laughs> and follow the little white balls. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe you should call him Tiger, little Tiger Woods. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, they, uh, you know, I'm glad you have two kittens because I think uh, cats always do better when they have someone to play with our uh, most recent uh, kitten uh, came to us as a single cat as a single kitten that I found and he really um, 
he really spends a lot of time playing with what we call Uncle Harry. He uh, spends most of his time playing with Harry Potter. And uh, Harry is a good sport about letting him chew on him and play with him and all of that kind of stuff. So I think that's great. They need somebody to learn from, right? All right. So here are the monthly uh, tasks that I do for the house. Um, you know, it's kind of a when did I list of uh, paying bills, cleaning out the mail drawer. What do I, you know, deep cleaning the kitchen, deep cleaning the bathrooms. What do I need to do for the whole house? Um, and let's see, let's put July over here as well. And the green color would be an okay color for this, but let's swap out this purple for... I don't know. I'll stick with that one for now, but that's a little too bright. Actually, the um, artist from uh, Rhonda from Doodlebug Draws uh, said she would get me the hex codes for the next couple of sets that I've purchased. Um, so that I can use those on my pages. So I think that would be, that would be really fun. I don't need notes and musings over here, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna change this to projects because I like to have a place to record projects that come up that, um, you know, might need to be done around the house. For example, my daughter came down and told me last night that um, she needs to have some, uh, grout replaced in her shower. So uh, this would be a place for me to write down something like that. So I'm going to leave that little note section over there for projects. Okay. So household tasks, that works pretty good. You know, I love the tables uh, features that OneNote has, and I use tables a lot because I think they can be uh, customized really, really well. Um, and uh, I just think it, it, you know, it works great. I love the table feature. It makes the pages work and, and do a good job. Let's see. All right. Now I do have another page that I always move forward. Um, and that is my personal meal planning page. I am going to simply make a copy of that for now because we're still in the month of June and I'm not quite ready for it to go to uh, July yet because I still need it for June, but I can make a copy of it so that when I look at my July list, it will be there, okay? For those of you who are new um, and maybe don't understand my personal meal planning page, what I do every week is I go through and uh, look at the refrigerator and the pantry and the freezer, and I think of things that need to be used, okay? Maybe it's uh, leftovers from the last shopping, or maybe it's things that have been in the freezer and they're about to, uh, you know, go to the, the point of no return, and so we need to get those things used. Um, so I make a list of those things uh, right here in this section, things that need to be used, and then I usually have some sort of food goal uh, that I put over here, oftentimes it might be, you know, to have salad a couple of times a week, or if it's an important reminder uh, down here in this box that it's somebody's birthday or we're going to a party or having a celebration of some sort, um, you know, I'll put that there. And then there's a section here for me to simply write out ideas for our dinners for Monday through Sunday of the week. And this section right here is a list of some of our favorite meals, um, things that are quick and easy. So for example, last night, we weren't sure what we wanted because we hadn't fully meal planned for the week because the different events were going on. And my daughter and I just sat there and decided, yep, we'll do breakfast. That's the easy thing to do. So it's something quick and easy. So we have a list of main meals here uh, that I can choose from. And then I have my predetermined shopping list down here. And for the shopping list, as I need things, I will simply go in and highlight something um, if I need it. And then when I go to the store, I know 
uh, what I need to pick up. So I can either use the pen highlighter. So for example, I know I need more apples or I can go in here and um, make it rid of that highlighter. I can go in here and highlight. I need both 1% milk and almond milk so I can highlight things that way as well. Okay. All right. So that page is set. Watermelons, uh, inbox, dashboard, health and habits, household, and personal. <laughs> you know, uh, Kevin, it's funny. I actually have allergies to cats as well. And I take uh, an allergy pill every day just to kind of help me not sneeze so much. My husband does, however, do the litter boxes for me, so I don't have to do that. Um, but the brushing seems to be my responsibility, which really is not good. I have to wash my hands immediately after brushing the cats. So, uh, yes, yes. Oh, Kevin, sounds like you have a full house if you have three dogs as well. Um, I tried allergy shots for a while, and that didn't really seem to work. The over-the-counter medication, the antihistamines seem to work the best for me. So I don't know. And just keep keep my hands away from my face, I guess. Anyway, eight uh, titles in there, but I did have an outline uh, set up. And I really liked this weekly setup. It is very similar to what I used in May, except in May, these boxes down here at the bottom where the actual day information goes was on the top. And all of my, you know, my important boxes or my tables that, that I use were on the bottom. And what I found was, is I added more things to, you know, my daily tasks at the top that, um, you know, my boxes down at the bottom got moved around. So for the month of June, I decided to um, put the boxes at the top and to move my uh, daily activities down here at the bottom. And you know what? That has been working out really, really great. So I am going to make a copy of this page and I am going to move that to July. Um, and we'll make a copy of that. Wow, Kevin, seven people, three dogs, uh, three adult cats, and two kittens. No ducks and chickens? <laughs> Which I would love to have. My husband says no, no. Um... Thank you, Kevin. I, I appreciate that. I, that, you know, that's my goal. I hope that, uh, me being able to try out things and share them with you all might give you some ideas or some inspiration, uh, for things that you could use. Um, you know, I might show a project plan about making a Christmas card, um, and you may not need to make a Christmas card, but the idea of the project plan might work in some other way for you. So I'm always happy uh, if people can take away uh, some of the ideas that I do um, and, uh, you know, come up with things on their own that they could use those for. OK. All right. So I'm going to need to change this to let's do July the 3rd is when this week will start. And let me look at my calendar here. That will go to July the 10th. If I'm doing my math correctly, the 9th, I'll put down the 9th. Because the following Monday would be the 10th. Okay. All right. And again, I can change this to today. And we'll make my top focus box. Change these colors. Do you guys have any questions about um, what I'm doing or you've seen me do something that you don't quite uh, understand how I've done it? I certainly can uh, help answer any questions about that. Just let me know in the comments and I will be happy to address that. 
All right. Well, we certainly can see here that that red does not match at all. My goodness. All right. I was thinking uh, that I needed to uh, get things ready for July, and I thought, you know, I might as well go ahead and do a live and let you guys see it in real time. And I think without all the chit chat that I've been doing, I normally can do this in about um, 30 minutes if I'm not talking too much. But since I have people working with me today, it's always nice to have company. All right, so get rid of the strawberries and the strawberry mouse. Um, And what watermelon sticker should I put on the weekly? Maybe this sweet summertime with the lollipop or with the popsicle? Or the one in a melon? <laughs> yes, it is much more fun, Bernice, with the chit chat. I really, I really do. Uh, like chatting with you guys. Um, I've been trying to do one live a month uh, for various different things, and um, I've really enjoyed them. I, I think they're they're really fun. Uh, it gives me an opportunity to get to know people better as well. Uh, I know that some of you leave comments on my videos, which I really appreciate, um, but it is nice to be able to, um, you know, just chat with you guys, have a conversation. All right, so let's do Sweet Summertime. I think that's pretty. Paste on the side over here. And I like that popsicle. Uh, that was a loud thunder boom. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but. Doodlebug Draws does some really cute, simple graphics, which I think are fun. Um, now this down here, this is not a table shading. This is simply a highlight. Uh, so I think I will do that in green for the next week or two. Let's see. So again, with the, the, you know, the kind of the GTD idea uh, here, uh, this is another section where I use a lot of GTD things. So um, in the GTD or getting things done methodology, there is a lot of, um, a lot of lists going on. And so normally what I try to do on my weekly page is I make a list of people that I need to communicate with, things that I might be waiting on, errands or things to buy. Now, when I, when I do that, I also will put on there the customized tag that I was showing you earlier, all of these tags uh, that I use so that when I do my uh, tag summary, uh, those items will show up and uh, they won't get lost. So not only do I keep lists on here to kind of keep things organized on my weekly page, but I use the tags as well. Okay. All right, now I am going to, this This is a feel-good moment for me because Sarah's quilt is finished. And so I am going to take that and delete Sarah's quilt from my list of things. Uh, the secretary painting is almost finished. Uh, I just need to put the final coat of finishing oil on it and screw the Hand, you know, the um, hinges back on and it will be finished. So in the next week or so, you will see me be able to remove that one as well. Here's that basement project. And Bernice, I wanted to show you, I did have it broken down. So here is my basement clean out project. And I have all of these different areas uh, in the basement, uh, you know, that are kind of designated 
And you see, I did a little bit of work in the pantry area back in March, and that's when I got sick. Uh, I usually like to, to go through and clean out the pantry area in March and then again in October so that I am, you know, kind of, I go through in October and restock what we need for the winter time, you know, canned beans and tomatoes and, you know, canned tomatoes and stuff like that. And then, um, um, and then I do it again in March and make sure that uh, all of those things are used up. Uh, and then replenish things like energy bars and, um, you know, different kinds of beverages and things that we might need for the spring and summer. Okay. Well, you know, Kevin, it sounds like you are surrounded by love. That's what it sounds like to me. With all those women in your house, uh, and even a granddaughter, it sounds like you are surrounded by love. <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, yes, I was a Girl Scout, Girl Scout leader, actually, for 14 years. Um, and so I do have a lot of that be prepared mentality of, uh, you know, going through and using things. So anyway, here is my basement project. You see, I haven't done very much. I need to really, I, I really need to do this. You guys need to hold me accountable. You need to start asking me every time we get together. So how's the basement project coming? <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Um, back to July. Oh, this was in, oh, look at this. This is telling. Look at when I created this plan. I created this plan in my 2021 life planner. Back when we were all stuck at home still. And I thought to myself, this is a good time to work on that basement. Yeah, I've been procrastinating. It is a good summer project, Samantha. Uh, and when it's really, you know, we get those 95 degree hot days, it is nice to go down in the cool basement and work. Uh, yes, flour, sugar, emergency uh, things. Canned meat is always a good thing to have. Um, spam is a good thing to have. I know my daughter loves spam. She may not like to eat it, but in an emergency, it is a good thing to have. Okay. All right. So let's go back to 2023. And this is our weekly page. Uh, what I can do here is I can, uh, she has the days of the week. And I did this for May too. And I might, I might do this again. I took the Monday. And I made a copy of it and pasted it over here on the side. Um, and then I put the day of the week next to it. Like so. Sorry about that. Let's see. And then I can take these two things together, copy them, and put them, paste them right in here, like so. You know what? Let me undo that and let me paste them as a graphic. So paste as a graphic, and then it's one graphic that I can make smaller, and it will stay together pretty well like that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, Samantha, a smoothie for my work or a popsicle for my work would be great this summer. That would be fun. Fun, fun, fun. All right, so let's go through and do a couple more of these. So we're going to copy this. 
paste it on the side. We need the date for, copy, and paste. I'm not really sure these circles look like watermelons. I think they might should need some seeds in them to make them look more like watermelons. But I'm not going to complain. Take that whole thing, copy it back to my monthly or my weekly page. Get rid of the 27th. Paste as a picture. And there we go. Also, if you guys have any suggestions for uh, <laughs> for other, and they are watermelon popsicles too, Miss Samantha. Um, if you guys have any other suggestions for things that you would like to see me create or share um, as a video, I certainly could do that. I have had a request from someone to do um, some note-taking kinds of things for uh, how I take notes and store notes or how a student might want to take and store notes. Um, so I'm thinking about that. I also have a um, some medical pages that I uh, want to share with you all. And I'm thinking about creating a medical uh, tracking notebook for not only uh, health and habits kinds of things, but um, for things like uh, doctor's appointments, tracking going to doctor's appointments and dentist appointments and tracking uh, lab results and test results and all of those kinds of things. Does that sound interesting to you guys? Do you think that would be something that you would like to see? as we work on Thursday here. I really cannot believe that this year is half over already. It is just amazing to me. All right. All right, I certainly, um, you know, as a teacher, a uh, retired teacher, I did a lot of uh, working with kids on note-taking. Um, and I find now, even as an adult, I still have lots and lots of things that I need to take notes on. So note-taking might be a good one. All right. Do you like those date uh, day covers like that? Do you think those look okay? You know, um, Kevin, it was interesting what sparked me to have this whole uh, epiphany about doing a medical notebook is I keep a medical page for myself. Um, and I went in for my latest mammogram. And, you know, one of the questions on the form was, you know, when did you have your last menstrual period? And I was like, now I know I can say these things because you have enough women in your house, but, um, you know, and I thought to myself, oh my gosh, when was that? And I brought up my OneNote medical page and listed right there at the top. I had thoughtfully written it down many years ago. Um, and so I had that information to share and I thought, you know, there's lots of things that I need to to write down about my medical condition. So I started thinking about, you know, creating this medical notebook. So that, that may be two or three videos, um, um, because, you know, it seems like a lot of information, but, you know, you think about your shop records, if you're a traveler and you go from one country to another, it would be nice to know what, uh, vaccinations you've had, um, or if you're planning a trip, you know, to a specific country, you may be required to have certain vaccinations. So, you know, that, that would be a great thing. Well, I think um, it's, again, a very bright and colorful uh, sticker set. The date covers are cute. I have a couple more to do. Let's see. Let's get on with Friday. And if I put them down here, 
then when the next week comes along, I can just um, change the numbers and move along. There we go. I'm not worried about making them all the same size because no watermelon is ever the same size. And paste as a picture. Now we have a holiday coming up here in July 4th in the United States. That is our Independence Day. That's the day that we uh, wrote out our grievances and um, read them aloud and, and said to the King of England that we no longer wanted to be part of the colonies and that's what started the whole independence war. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it uh, uh, is celebrated on the 4th of July every year. So that's a celebration uh, that's coming up for us in this country. Let's see. Bernice says, I've never gone to university, so something like essay or a summary, maybe. Yeah, I do, um, you know, book summaries for things that I've read. Uh, I also have um, PDFs that I have uh, been given to read for various things, and I'll print those out in OneNote and then make my annotations on the side uh, about the notes that I want to take from that. Um, So, um, I'm not sure Samantha's the one that's uh, keeping track of the notes uh, for ideas and things that we do. But yes, I do have access to the chat once we are finished. Um, so you can come back and check that out. Uh, Samantha is very, very, very helpful to me, uh, especially for things like the live chat. Um, she's very talented and very creative. I, I, I'm grateful for all of her help. Um, she is not a huge OneNote user. Uh, she did when she was in school uh, because we did a lot of, um, uh, she was homeschooled by me. And so we did a lot of um, her coursework and organizing her coursework uh, in OneNote. Uh, but then when she went to university, many of her professors would not allow computers in the classroom for various reasons. So um, she had to go back to the paper and pencil method of taking notes. Which I was kind of surprised, you know, with all of the technological advances, why they won't let uh, some of the students use those kinds of things. But. Let's see, last date cover here, and that will be nine. Of course, when I went to university, you know, we still wrote in blue books for our, for our exams, and we still had typewriters that we typed our papers with footnotes on. There was none of this fancy word processing, although it did start to come into play at the end of uh, my uh, career or as a student and certainly for my master's work, but anyway. Now, by putting those date covers, those stickers actually in the uh, column cells themselves, uh, it really helps, you know, kind of keep everything together. I could have put them up above, but then, you know, all the graphics move around. I find uh, oftentimes putting things in a table uh, or in their own container really helps uh, keep them together. Okay. Yeah. So, Bernice, have you checked out the book journal that I have with the... Um, Let's see. 
this the one page that I really like uh, in my book journal. You can find it. I may not have it open on this computer. The one page that I really like uh, on this um, page is I like I like this page because it lets me list the author and the publisher and that kind of thing. And then I have this whole section over here to take notes or to put quotes that I like or something like that. Um, so I think that's. I really like this page. And then this was the basic format that I started with. And then I put it uh, onto a notebook page so that it looks more like this. Um, and I just like having that ability to put, you know, thoughts and things, quotes from the book and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, so I think that works really, really well. And then I have a link up here where it goes back to the index uh, where it lists the various books that I've read. Okay. So that would be my suggestion for a way to keep track of notes on the books that you've read. I think that's cool. A blue book is, um, a blue book was something that you took exams in, uh, when, when I was at the university and I guess Samantha still had a few of hers too. And it, it was a small, uh, book, uh, that was probably, you know, it felt like almost a square, um, notebook and it had a blue cover on it and it might've been 18 pages, you know, of just blank paper. And so what would happen is, is you would come in and the professor would hand out uh, the test questions, you know, it might just be a single sheet with four or five, six essay questions on them. And, and then you would have your empty blank blue book, uh, and your pen, and you would go and sit down and start writing in your blue book, all of the answers for your, you know, for your essay questions or whatever, uh, in there. And some, uh, professors, you know, would actually stand at the door and check and make sure that your blue book was empty, you know, when you came in because they didn't want you to come in with notes or, you know, anything like that. So anyway, it was, it was strange to sit there and, and to create an essay like that on the spot, but that's the way they did it. So, um, yes. Um, Yes, I did make a video about the book journal, uh, and I think this page that I'm showing you now should be in that video. Um, you're more than welcome to steal that. <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate that, yeah. Yeah, so anyway. Um, we used, uh, when Samantha was a very young student in school, we used a lot of composition books for the same purpose so that they didn't get, uh, you know, loose pages everywhere. Uh, I could just collect the one notebook and it had everything in there. So, all right, let's jump back to our current planner. Um, and one of the pages uh, that I, or one of the uh, things on my dashboard, Bernice, is a link to my 365 uh, day book challenge. And I like to put that on my dashboard because at the beginning of every month, I like to go back in and fill out the books that I have read. So you see here so far, I have not put in the books that I've read for the month of June yet. Although I do have, uh, laying here next to me, a, a stack of books that I did check out for July that I'm hoping to read. So I just wanted to share these with you guys quickly. This one's called, uh, a deadly inside scoop. And this is about, uh, somebody who, um, takes over a, uh, ice cream shop. And, uh, apparently there's a murder that occurs there and, uh, she has to go about and help solve the murder. And of course I was attracted to it because I love ice cream and, uh, I love this cute little kitty cat that's sitting there. 
So actually my daughter brought this home for me. She found it and thought it looked interesting. And then this one is a, a nonfiction book. Let's see if you guys can see the cover of that. It's called uh, Growing Old, Notes on Aging with Something Like Grace, <clears throat> which I thought was interesting. It's not a very big book, but uh, maybe it has some tips on there for growing old gracefully. And this one looked interesting. This is the first in a series. It's called uh, Fox Crossing. Um, and it is a uh, set of stories that takes place in the state of Maine here in the United States. I have a friend who just moved to Maine. And I thought reading that book might help me feel a little bit closer to her. And then this one, you guys probably know. Susan Wiggs. This is the Lost and Found uh, Bookshop. Uh, and it looks pretty interesting in, um, as well. So anyway, this one's a pretty thick, big book, but these are, these are large print. So that's part of why it looks so big. Um, large print books are easier for me to read, especially at night. So I appreciate the fact that we have large print books, but, um, again, here on my book challenge, I like to list the books that I've read you know, during the month. So I need to go back and put my June books in. So that's one of the reasons that I like to have that on my, um, on my dashboard here. So I can get to things like that. Another thing that I need to set up is my goals. Uh, so if I go to my goals, um, uh, these are my goals for the second quarter scroll out so you can see those. So I have uh, eight different areas and I had goals set up for each of those areas. And I need to go back and fill in the progress that I've made on some of them. Some of them I have filled in the progress, some I have not, but I also need to set up my goals for the third quarter. Um, I have my first quarter goals here and my second quarter goals here. And then I have space down here for my third quarter and fourth quarter goals. Okay. All right. So I've got to get, that's on my list to do too, is to check that out. All right. Um, you know, I think now, uh, especially since the pandemic, a lot of the exams were done online. You would have to submit them online. It's amazing, you know, how different the school systems are. So. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. All right. So that's my goals link to that page and my health and habit tracker, my analytics page for the channel, which, you know, I can I just say thank you to all of you who watch my videos and who make comments and who give me that thumbs up and you know, for some reason, that's what YouTube wants. I feel bad having to ask for that every time. But, you know, YouTube really, uh, I think, you know, encourages uh, the creators to go ahead and do that. And the more likes we get, the more comments we get, the more, you know, smiley faces we get, the more YouTube promotes our um, videos to other people. And so, you know, I'm, I'm sure that you guys are hearing me say at the end of every video, you know, to please give me a thumbs up or a like or leave a comment. But um, that's just a way that, you know, my videos get shown to more people. And so I appreciate every everything that uh, that you guys do to help me out here at the channel. I really appreciate it. Bernice, I agree with Kevin. You are a youngster. Uh, you're turning 47. Uh, good for you. Uh, uh, what would it be like to be 47 again? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, let's see. The only other thing that I can do uh, for this month is I can set up a daily template, um, which I really liked. Let me see. I think it was May. My May daily. Let's see. Maybe it was April because in May I did so much traveling. Hmm. 
Yes, my May Daily I really liked. I am going to, again, make a copy of this page, and I'm going to take it to July, and I'm going to clean it up and make it a daily page for July. I heard one joke where somebody said that uh, the way that they stopped aging was as they converted their age into um, Celsius, <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny. Okay, I'm going to call this July Daily. Um, and I'm going to quickly go in here and clean up these things. Kevin, where is your um, family? You said you were working on genealogy. Where is your family originally from? I have family that came over to the United States from Germany uh, many, many years ago. Um, and my husband's family uh, is from uh, England and Scotland. All right, so let's put our little watermelon guy on there. Well, maybe, Bernice, you could uh, get your age up a little bit by going to Fahrenheit. <laughs> yes, Kevin, happy belated birthday. All right, so on this page, um, I'm going to actually leave that yellow. It picks up a little bit of the yellow of the flowers. And we'll go down here to projects that we're working on. And we'll fix that shading. There we go. Let's make this box. Um... We'll do it the dark green color, I think. Same as this one. This uh, box here that I have is kind of for the big word of the day, uh, if I'm doing that. And then we'll make these finance ones over here. We'll do those in a lighter green for the shading there. And my meals. And let's see. All right. Now let's put some other things on here. All right, which stickers have I not used yet that I really want to use? <sighs> oh. Hundred and sixteen. I have a friend who is a hundred years old, and I have another friend who is a hundred and one years old. I um I am amazed, amazed at their longevity. In fact, my one uh lady friend who is a hundred years old, uh she and I just went to lunch together the other day. I stopped by and picked her up and she is still uh, walking on her own. She uses a little cane, but that's about it. And she is something else. I tell you what, uh, she is also a quilter. Um, and uh, her eyesight is, is getting bad. So she's not able to 
to see as much as she used to, um, to be able to quilt, but uh, I still took a few things for her to look at. Um, and it was, it was a very nice day. She's such a sweet lady. And then my other friend that uh, is 101, uh, Samantha and I attended a um, service where they were celebrating, uh, he's a veteran, and so they were celebrating uh, his work that he had done during World War II. So we were there for that celebration, which was really nice. Let's see, if I flip this, again. It kind of fills in that space up there a little bit better. You are one in a melon. That's cute. Okay. And one more sticker. I don't think I've used this flower yet. So question, do you all structure your pages in OneNote like I do? Or do you just let the spacing of OneNote, you know, the, the unlimited page just kind of be your guide, um, you know, when you're doing your things uh, in OneNote? Priority. Let's get that checkbox. And we'll put that for our top priority of the day. Pasting on the side, bring it into place, send it to the back, oops, let's move this box down. Zoom in a little bit so I can see this better. Okay. All right, so there we have our daily schedule, a place for our top priority, our cleaning zones, our weather for the day, energy and mood level, This um, page right here, or this section right here, these are the things that I try to do on a daily basis. I think I have a whole list of them down here. So things that I like to get done on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. kind of a daily routine for me. Um, and then I will put them up here on the day. Um, so let's see, that first week will be July the 3rd. And that is a Monday. Actually, so we're going to get rid of this and we're going to bring Monday up. We'll highlight all of Monday. Copy. Paste. Make it smaller so it fits in that space. It will be Monday the 3rd. And then I have space for the weather there, and I can just pull it up into place. And these are the things that I like to get done on Monday. Okay. Kevin, it sounds like you've been retired for a while. Did you, when you first retired, did you have problems uh, structuring your day or did that come pretty easily for you? Yeah, so Kevin's saying, um, it, when I was asking about the structure of the page, 
Um, he said, depends on what I'm doing. For most of the planner, I follow your general gu guidance. And for other things, I just grab things and drop them on the page. Um, pages have some a semblance of organization. So I, I agree with that. I think um, one of the things, uh, Kevin, that I did that I don't know if I've shown you guys or not is I created a notes page that is um, just kind of a, a basic uh, note page. Let me see if I can see that. Let's see. Oh, did I do that in here? Did I put it in year long? I think I did. Look, now that I'm looking for something, I'm not finding it. <laughs> All right, so I know it's not Happy Notes. I know it's not in the 2021 stuff. Let's just look in this notebook. I have lots and lots and lots of pages. Nope, I didn't put it on there either. Nope, that's not the one I'm looking for either. Oh, so here's here's an example of it. So this is a um a book that I was reading, uh, Bernice, that was um that I wanted to take notes on. And so I created this notes template page. Um and let me scroll in so you guys can see it a little bit better. And this happened to be actually uh, a book about metabolism and hormone weight loss. And so what I did is I took the title of the page up here at the top and I just put a, a box around it or a line on top and the bottom. And then I created a backdrop. So I gave the page uh, a lined page with uh, purple lines, uh, faint purple lines. And then I was able to pick a font. So this is Century Gothic 11.5 and it pretty much fits exactly in uh, you know, the area that you're typing in. And then I was able to also add, you know, the picture of the book that I was reading and that kind of thing. Um, and so that for me is a, a very nice way, I think, to organize just general random notes. Okay. Then I also have um, in uh, last year's planner, I have a whole section on um, research notes. And um, one of the things um, that I started was when I uh, created, started making notes on things, I would, um, you know, like you were saying, Kevin, just drop things in to the page. So here are some colors that I liked. So rather than formatting them in a certain way, I would just drop them in, um, on the page and, uh, you know, just have that information stored there. Then I also got into the point where I would do note taking, um, where I would, um, you know, create a, a template page and I would use that. Um, let's see. This is one where I, uh, had the masterclass that I was doing and I had the PDF and you can see that I just dropped the PDF into uh, the page and started working on that. 
So anyway, it's it's fun to uh, to play around with diff different page templates and that kind of thing. But that's something that I'm going to talk about when we talk about note taking. Um, and I like this page. I think it works pretty well. Um, and I actually think I set that up as a template because I think that looks pretty good. Anyway. Um. So uh, it sounds like, Kevin, you're getting lots of honey-do lists or daddy-do lists or something like that. Yeah. Uh, outlines is a good way to organize things. It really, it really helps keep things segmented. Um, I also find myself using quadrants or, um, that kind of thing as well as a teacher doing unit studies. Uh, I would need to organize things. Let's say that the unit that we were working on was, um, um, fish, for example, you know, then I would need to have a box for literature on fish and an art project and the science of fish and, you know, something that had to do with social studies. So maybe, uh, using stream maps and, and that kind of thing. So I, you know, I would use different quadrants or, or I would put two quadrants together and have, you know, eight boxes laid out that I would use for a different way to organize, um, the notes and stuff. So. Yes, Bernice, I enjoy the lives too. I'm going to continue to try to do one once um, a month. And I really appreciate you guys being here. I just heard my grandfather clock go off, which means it is about time uh, for me to uh, wrap things up here. If you have any other questions, uh, you know, please feel free to either send me a, an email or leave me a comment. Um, and I'd be happy to get back with you. Um, thanks, Kevin. I, I'm glad you like the page format. It was pretty easy to create. I'm sure you would have no problem, uh, doing something like this whatsoever. Um, you know, the, um, the styles feature on the, on the different page creations is very helpful going in and setting up the page layout and all that is, is pretty easy to do. So, um, anyway, so here's the ruled lines. It's under the view tab. And you can do different ruled lines or uh, grid lines. You can also change your page color if you wanted to have a blue page for certain categories, that kind of thing. But I don't like page color as much as I do. I enjoy having the lines there. But anyway, anyway. Well, thanks for joining me today, guys. I've really had fun and I'm excited because now I am ready for July uh, and ready to start getting things planned and written down and on track. Um, let's see. Um, I've thanked you for joining me and I appreciate that. I um, uh, encourage you to continue working in OneNote and uh, I'd love to see some of the stuff that you guys are working on. Uh, my email address um, is listed underneath each of the videos. So if you want to send me an email with a picture of one of your pages, that would be great. Um, and thanks so much for joining us, hanging out, chatting. It's nice to get to know everybody. And until next time, here's hoping that you can live a more simplified and organized life through better planning. I use OneNote. Until next time, guys. Okay. Bye.